Oh, yes, uh, it would seem that uh, the airport runway is on time and on schedule to open. And uh, we have to discuss that, Mr. Simon Tumba, who is... Uh, who was an aviation journalist, but currently publishes uh, Nigeria Travel Smart. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you, Amape. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sure you must be excited. Is that the word to use now, that uh, this airport runway is being completed on schedule? Very exciting. And uh, it's quite a huge uh, mark for the government, for the Buhari-led government, to achieve this in record time. In fact, a day before schedule, mm -hmm. which is quite a huge achievement. The minister had to stick out his neck to say that if it is not completed on the schedule date, he's going to quit. So that is quite a huge achievement. So it means he gets to keep his job. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> oh, but what was your thinking when the Abuja airport was shut? And, you know, how do you think that that impacted how Nigerians traveled? Uh, personally, I faced it. I think I did about five trips from Lagos during mm -hmm. this period. Uh, there was a lot of pessimism. In fact, on a personal note, a friend did promise me that if it was achieved on record time, he's going to take me out to lunch to any restaurant of my choice. So he owes you lunch? Oh, yeah. does. Uh, sure, he does. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, it was apprehensive for many people. Mm -hmm. Some people had to cancel their travel plans, and it was a kind of no-no. But uh, at the end, the government did quite a lot logistically in terms of security, in terms of all the arrangements. It was perfect. There was no incident recorded, and uh, I believe it's kudos to the federal government for what they were able to achieve over these last six weeks. And uh, quite uh, a new thing in, to, to, to many people because uh, people thought that it was, it was not possible to achieve that in six weeks. But, you know, there are questions to be asked. I mean, oh, yes. first, first thing is first, you know, people have asked why it is that first Abuja, being the federal capital territory, uh, should have just one runway. Yes. We have just one airport. That might be yeah. fair yes. enough. But yeah. we have just one runway. Mm -hmm. And then we wait 21 years for the runway to expire first before yes. we think about, you know, building another one or even maintaining what it was that we had. It's quite a pity. It's quite of the, one of the problems we have in Nigeria in terms of maintenance, in terms of having a structure or a kind of template in how to maintain our things. And uh, I remember two years ago there was also a bill to build a second way, and the amount was about $60 billion. There was a lot of hue and cry in the National Assembly, and that was impossible. So based on that and because of the way the wear and tear of that wrong way, the government had to take this decision, unfortunately. But I think we should look forward to one that now we have a brand new runway. Uh, in fact, in the next couple of hours, Ethiopian Airlines is about to land in that airport between 11 and 11:30 a.m. this morning. Oh, the, the airport is already in use. Well, it's open. Yeah, it's supposed to open tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. But Ethiopian Airlines is landing between 11 and 11:30 a.m. this morning. So that is quite a huge achievement for the government, despite all the hue and cry and all the pessimism and whatever. So I, I just believe we should look forward. We have a brand new airport uh, runway, sorry, that can last at least 10, 12 years. And uh, apart from that, we have the terminal building that has been renovated with lifts that can take 16 people, another one that can take 32 people. Uh, so that's what we, look, we should look forward to. Well, there definitely will be lessons to learn from this. I'm sure that Ethiopian Airways has been rewarded, you know, for the fact that they stayed with the federal government, you know, yes. and, and used the Kaduna Airport. They were the only international oh, airline yes. that oh, stayed, yes. uh, yes. that used uh, the Kaduna Airport while the Abuja Airport was shut down. Yes. Uh, but then there are questions, you know, when we say, okay, we've diverted traffic to Kaduna Airport and mm. we find that international airlines say, we cannot come. Yes. Or we will not come. Mm -hmm. There, you know, there are huge questions to be asked. You know, in that particular area, um, what do you think we can do? What are some of the lessons that you think we have learned from this shutdown? And what should we be doing in future? You know, to avoid another shutdown. Well, we need to have a maintenance plan on our own ways, on our infrastructure. We need to build infrastructure in such a way that there can be seamless travel. For instance, now in the Kaduna Airport, you land, you land to the airport, you can link up with the rain with the rail. It's about 20 minutes drive from the local airport to the rail station at Regasa. Then from there to Abuja is about two hours, which is good. So I, I believe our thinkers, our policy makers, and our planners should plan to have our airports in such a way that you land at the airport, you can link up with the rail, and then you have efficient services on the road. That's how it is done abroad. All these things are linked up together. And then we must have a template in fixing our maintenance. That has been the problem over the years. 
And then our, our, our planners, I'm talking of airport and infrastructural planners, they should look forward. I don't like the way we build our airports. We build airports in such a way that it doesn't last five, ten years. If you look all over the world, they build airports with long-term views, long-term. We don't build airports spending $500 million and we're calling the airport. These are not airports. And for God's sake, it's not about money. You need to create the environment that will attract the investment. Simon Tumba, you did say that you don't like the way and manner in which the airports are built in Nigeria today. Do you think that the funding is adequate enough to yes. perhaps do what you'd like to see? It's not about the funding. We don't have the funds. When you talk about airports, you're talking about a multi-billion dollar project. What you need to do is to attract the investment into your airports. Let me give you an example. Um, Doha is the capital of Qatar. Qatar has a population of about 2 million people. Yes, they have the money. But most of the people that fly into Doha are transit passengers. There's an airport that attracts over 30 million passengers a year. There are transit passengers that come into Doha. They don't step into the country. Rather, they don't step into the city. And then from Doha, they move into Guangzhou. They move into Hong Kong. They move into other parts of the world. Now, how many people that come into Lagos have transit visas to go to Ouagadougou, to go to Dakar, to go to Libreville, to go to wherever? How many people? You need to attract the conducive environment to attract passengers, to attract traffic. That's what we have to do. Thank God now this government is talking of ease of business. Those are the factors you need to consider. When you attract the investment, then there will be the capital to build a solid airport that can last you 30, 40 years. And I ask, what is, what, where does Nigeria Aviation want to be in 40 years? Where do we want our airports to be in 40, 50 years? Do we have a plan? Do we have a plan that we can sell to the outside world and say, this is what we envisage we're going to be in 2050, in 2060. Can you buy into it if they are not willing to buy into it? Why? So we need to come up with a plan for the aviation sector. Oh, yeah, you need a plan. Which one of the airports, when you look at the two major airports that we have, I mean, the busiest, uh, as it were, Abuja and Lagos, which oh, one yes. of them do you think has the potential to be a hub? Well, because Lagos has been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. We are talking of uh, probably 40 years or more. So Lagos has that potential. So if you were to, to ask the federal government to invest, it would be at, in the Lagos airport? Yeah, Lagos and then to some extent Abuja, because most countries have kind of two windows. For instance, Brazil has Rio and they have Sao Paulo. India has Delhi, they have Mumbai, all those things. So you look at whatever, of course, the seat of government and then the commercial capital. But you normally give priority to the commercial capital. Now that and the, then the city of government can also benefit. Now that the Abuja airport is about to open and, you know, Kaduna would maybe will be seeing less use, uh, what would you recommend to keep the Kaduna airport, you know, still in, in limelight? Well, it's, it's commendable. The government just did an investment forum some weeks, about a week ago or two, mm -hmm. trying to drive investment in the state. So it's good. And it's also good that they have a solid airport now. And they, they can sell the airport, linking it with the rail services uh, out of Kaduna to Abuja. And they have, is, I mean, an airport that is presentable. If ET, that is Ethiopian Airlines, can fly into Kaduna as it is, I don't think there is anything wrong for any international airline to fly into Kaduna. Mm. But as I'm talking of the critical mass you need to generate, to make the traffic profitable, mm -hmm. I believe the government should concentrate on getting a critical mass that will draw investment into Lagos, into Abuja airports. Well, and then the other airports can benefit from that. Mr. Simon Tumba, we have to say thank you very much for coming on Sunrise Daily. We thank you. are afraid we run out of time completely there, but thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Thank well, you. we're speaking with Mr. Simon Tumba, who is an aviation journalist and also the publisher of Nigerian Travel Smart. That will be it from us here in Abuja. Thank you so much for watching. It's such a pity I did not bet with anyone as to whether or not this airport will be open on time. Maybe you guys have been owing me lunch now. Gimba, thank you. About where you do remember that we went through that airport in Kaduna and then we had to take the train and also come back by road. So we've had both way experience and that was one good one we, we did have. And that's it from our Lagos studios. I'm Gimba Umar.